And welcome to another episode of Bounce Off. I'm Scott Ball. That's George Ball. And what are we talking about today, Georgia? We're going to talk about Disney because Disney's getting a little glitzy and it's starting to scare everybody. They're, they're feeling a little left out. People are feeling like uh, Disney only cares about rich people. It's There's some optics problems going on. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Okay. You'd think they learned their lesson from the Galaxy Star Cruiser Hotel, but or well, the experience. They don't seem to have learned the right lessons at all from that whole experience. Mm-hmm. Mostly they're confused. I mean, I didn't I don't have an article for that, but th- there was a, a lot of talk about how they're running surveys to try to figure out what it is that people don't like. I mean, I think it was pretty clear what they don't like. They they don't like that the price tag is so high that the expectations are too high to really enjoy it. Yeah. And I think they're still having trouble selling rooms. I mean, up to this mm. point, they've been doing all right, but they're really kind of at the end of that threshold where everyone that's been really wanting to go and willing to pay just any price at all, they're pretty much gone through that. So Yeah, they've been we'll through that list of people. Left. Yeah. Yeah, and they had a, a fire drill the other day, and I think it wasn't a fire drill. I think it was actually the fire alarm went off, and we were talking about how if you were shuffled outside into the parking lot of that place in the middle of your experience of the two days, like you'd want your money back just for the 15 minutes that you had to stand out there in the heat. I would think so. I mean, and then you find out as well, just standing out there, just kind of how ugly the whole thing looks from the outside. Granted, it doesn't matter because you're not supposed to be looking at it from the outside, but it is a little bit just kind of demoralizing to be out there and you're like, huh, kind of looks like a Motel 6. Oh, it looks a lot worse from the back than it does from the front, just when you're driving by it. Anyway, this article, you clued me into this. This story is about how there is a hundred grand Disney around the world private jet adventure that was being sold and is already sold out. Yeah, and I think it started at a hundred thousand. And I think there were levels. Oh. I'm not sure how you get levels out of it, but maybe length of the trip or something. I don't is there know, upgrades? But... I didn't read that there was upgrades. Uh, 75 ultimate fans uh, around the world trip. For the low, low starting price of oh, 110. So when they say starting price, it seems like there must be something else out there, but they're really not talking about it. Well, it's probably alcohol on top or something like that. Something weird like that's not included. <laughs> I'm not sure um, if I'd want the alcohol to get through it or I'd be ticked that I was kind of like a little tipsy through a lot of it and missed, uh, missed stuff. I don't know. 24 days, six countries, all 12 Disney theme parks worldwide. It's very high level kind of uh, adventure. You don't really spend a lot of time at, at anything. And some of the things are just a very brief idea like, hey, we're in India. Here's the Taj Mahal. Okay, bye. Yeah, that's all I wanted to ask you. Um, so flip back up to that map. Mm. I wanted to ask, so this isn't all just Disney no, parks, right? No, it's not. So they're also hitting like landmarks, world landmarks too. A couple well. of world landmarks. It's not a lot. You go into the article, it explains in detail which, which ones they are, but it's not very many of them. And how much time do you have in each location? Does it say? It does, but it's really short. Like a day? Uh, yeah, in some cases. I think the whole thing is like a month long, if I remember reading this right. Between stops at the Asia Parks and Disneyland Paris, the private jet will make several detours to three, uh, three iconic landmarks, the Taj Mahal, the Pyramids of Giza, and the Eiffel Tower. And again, a, the opportunity to be a guest at Skywalker Ranch. This is whole Skywalker Ranch thing that we're going to talk about <laughs> and know. something else as well. But yeah. we're really trying to get people in there. <laughs> Why does Skywalker Ranch want people there so badly right now? Mm. I just think that's very strange. Um, the, the person who wrote the article, the author was saying that uh, he felt like it was the airline that was creating trust in this whole endeavor. Um, well, it's a private jet. So yeah, it's, it's a not private like you're going jet. Delta or anything like that. Um, yeah, I... I actually don't have a big issue with this. I think that uh, I have less of an issue with this one than I do some of the other things they advertise for. I mean, this is clearly really focusing on uh, really, really wealthy people who have that kind of money to blow around. But it would be kind of cool to have the opportunity to jump around from park to park if you 
could do that. It'd also be a lot of fun to take one of those cruises. Well, this is it. A this whole, is what I was talking about. Long. It's a Four Seasons private jet. So okay. he was saying that the branding of Four Seasons is uh, part of what people that would buy into this would be buying into because they would know that they would get a really superior flight experience. But that's at the same really, time... That's a really big plane for a private jet. Yeah, and you can tell it's still not quite shaped right for a regular airplane, but... It'd be on the large side for private jet. And it's 75 people in there. Um, so let me ask you this, Georgia. Is this a trip that you kind of do on your own? Or is it limited engagements? You're still going to be traveling with like five other couples who are doing this. You're traveling with 75 people total that are going to be doing this. Oh, okay. I hate it. Now. <laughs> I know. That was the author's point. Is He says, if you had like 100,000 to blow for a month of travel, why wouldn't you want to do all of your own planning? Why would you want to handle it like this? <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. I mean, why would I want to do it with 75 people? That's that's not private. That's no. anything but private. Yeah. It's not really advertised like it's private. It's advertised like you're going to be doing this with rich super fans. Mm. No, no, thank you. This is, yeah. Yeah. That would give me complete control over the itinerary if I was putting it to him myself and not be subject to sharing the experience with 73 strangers. I like this sentence. The odds are not in your favor that of 73 wealthy people, they'll all be perfectly tolerable and well-adjusted. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to have we're gonna have a few Karens in there. We're going to have some. You're going to so. be riding it with the Schitt's Creek family. Yeah. <laughs> like, <It's> we, just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have people all trying to outdo each other for their, for their wealth too. Yeah. Like, I'm going to have two of these shots. Well, I'm gonna have four of these shots. You're just gonna have people trying to out outspend each other. Oh, that sounds incredibly irritating. Yeah, it's the coziness aspect of it that even if you had that kind of money, makes this very odd and kind of odd to me that it sold out and sold out so quickly. You really just can't, there's no accounting for taste, right? Is there really any reason that this couldn't have been done? Like just individual couple, would it really cost more? Is it, does it need to be a hundred thousand uh, dollars? No, that's, that's funny. So he said in the, the author that he didn't want, he, there was two approaches he could take to this. He could talk about the feelings of it and just his gut instinct, or he could sit down and break down the math. And he felt like nobody would really want to read the article where he breaks down the map. I um, would, <laughs> actually, because I'm that would have been a lot more that. work. I know, but I, I'd be curious about that. I'm like the logistics of is can you break down the math and have this work, or would it really cost more to pull this off and be a private jet and fly around the the Earth and and visit all these parks in the span of just a few weeks? Maybe, maybe it really would cost more than 100,000, 100,000 plus. But certainly, once again, Disney has reared their ugly head when you find out it's being done with 75 other people because clearly the profit margin of this is embarrassingly high. Yeah, so he concludes that um, even though he himself is not at all an eat the rich person and doesn't have anything against the people that can afford this, it doesn't make practical sense to him as being the way you'd want to spend this money to travel. Yeah. And yeah, I can see, I see it. Very little things Disney's doing these days make practical sense. Very little. Very strange. All right, uh. so the next story... This one probably does make a lot more practical sense. The villain's lair. There's, yeah, there's might be more people that aren't as familiar with this. And um, so this is kind of like the, the, the big thing in the theme park, particularly here in Orlando, is in adding timeshare buildings to all the main or to many of the main resorts. Mm -hmm. And so this is one of the, the one that's added to uh, the contemporary. And it is a separate building into itself and it is strictly timeshare. So only for people who are buying into the Disney timeshare program. Um, and I'm going to just assume everyone kind of gets what timeshare is at this point. And um, so this is a lounge that's set up at the top of that building. And because this building is only available to timeshare people, it's also this lounge is only going to be accessible to timeshare people as well. 
You know, it kind of makes me sad what they called it. To call it like the top of the world lounge just seems cruel. Because the top of the world restaurant was such a big, exciting, unique experience with a show and cheesiness and like just unforgettable. And then this lounge is just the most basic kind of lounge that you could imagine. This is not the top of the world. I don't mind it. Although I think if it's going to be a villains type lair, it seems like you'd want something maybe like purple curtains or something or something that would tie that in a little bit more but uh, wouldn't it be it, to me it would be interesting if you had it and um maybe you had like a grand piano and you had like someone as one of the villains playing the piano or something you know or just something like that or maybe everyone all the wait staff can be like it look like um, characters from the haunted mansion or something i don't know but but um, yeah, I just m- one of the concerns I have is that um, are they going to do more and more of this stuff into the timeshare? Are they going to just put more emphasis on their timeshares than on the all inclusive stuff in the parks? And you know, you can look at like Genie Plus, the Lightning Lane kind of stuff to like back that up as a theory that yes, they very well might be doing that and just kind of like kicking everyone else out to the curb. And saying, well, we're going to focus on all this high-end stuff for everybody that's really going to be for very few people. Well, unless I'm missing something, it does seem like all of the most recent hotel offerings, other than the Star Wars Hotel, which is even worse, have all been Vacation Club extensions. It really seems to be the focus. I know the other one they're talking about a lot right now is for the Polynesian. They're doing a tower for the Polynesian as well. In fact, they got rid of the Luau the coveted luau that everyone loved just so they could do build another one of those towers so yeah i think i'm right i think they're really just so focused on high-end entertainment stuff for like the top dollar people and the rest of us can just well i guess we can go to universal (laughs) (laughs) but it is irritating don't you think aren't you i am i'm really annoyed by it this is not what disney's supposed to be yeah it it, it feels very exclusionary. It's not as exclusionary as the guy that wrote an article recently that said that you shouldn't even be allowed into the resort unless you had a reservation. I'd, and I'd love to know how the restaurants were going to manage with that when that is not how any restaurant or even merchandise shop operates in the entire city of Orlando, but yeah. okay. But, you know, um, there's been a, there's a lot of also... Um, pushback to this notion of saying, well, look, if, you, you know, they're just doing stuff for the high uh, value uh, content and there's nothing wrong with people who have money getting to have things, that, you know, at a higher cost if, because, I mean, they have money for it. And yeah, I, I don't begrudge people to have a lot of money. I mean, if you're wealthy, you're wealthy. It's just, it's, it's a bad optic for the Disney brand. The Disney brand is supposed to be family. It's not supposed to be oil chic. <laughs> yeah, well, to, to come across like that's all you're interested in catering to, yes. Which brings us to the this one that's made a ton of news. Uh, we finally know what's included in the $5,000 Disney Wish drink. So this is on the cruise. Yes, the new cruise. Apparently. So I, I think that's the Disney wish. I think that's the new ship. And I, and I have a feeling part of this is a marketing ploy to just advertise the new ship that they're doing that. Yeah. So they have, this is, they have a star Wars themed um, cocktail lounge on that ship. And this is one of the drinks that you can have. And you can see it comes in this like elaborate uh, device. And I don't know, in the star Wars pantheon, does that have a name? Something like I that. forget what they've recently named it, but the the uh, lore around it is that it is actually an ice cream maker that a character was carrying in Empire Strikes Back in the background, and that a lot of people would laugh about that because it was just sort of a thrown together prop, and it's clearly an ice cream maker, and it's the sort of thing you catch you know years later on video that no one caught in the theater, mm. and then they started including it in um, the Mandalorian as a as, as an actual prop. Just kind of like done up. And so there's a name for it. I think the article might mention what it is. 
Well, so this is in the Star Wars hyperspace lounge. That's the name of the lounge. That's, I guess, yeah. roughly what it looks like. Yeah, I'd be an artist rendering of it, I'm sure. Um, so it is a $5,000 drink. And, you know, they for a while, they wouldn't even reveal to people why it was a $5,000 drink. That blows my mind. Like People would ask. They'd be like, mm-hmm. what? Why is this fight? What's in it? And people would be like, well, we can't tell you. I guess it was one of these like, if we told you, we'd have to kill you kind of things. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But, but eventually they did kind of reveal it. Because I think it was, the blowback was getting kind of severe. And it, it does have components to it. And um, that are pricing. So like there's a, like a 26-year-old barrel bourbon that it is part of it and some other uh, components as well and uh, yeah i, I think it listed it. here okay Damas cognac yuzu grand marnier quintessence yeah, the, that's probably very expensive the pappy van winkle 23 year reserve bourbon and such and you know again all that stuff is nice and maybe it's a great drink but it, it's a five thousand dollar drink and generally, you're going to probably buy, maybe you buy more than one. I don't know. You're going to share it? I mean, if anybody yes. drinks. No, it you comes know. with four. Oh, it does. Thank yeah. goodness. So it's for oh, four like people. That makes it better. And but, uh, so it comes with a bunch of gifts. So that's when it starts to get really weird. Yeah. A hyperspace-themed room decoration. Whatever that is. Uh-huh. <laughs> A bottle of sparkling wine from Skywalker Ranch, so you get extra alcohol for, for doing it. And the, the crazy one, a voucher for one person, even though I guess there was four glasses that come with us, to visit Skywalker Ranch by themselves, which is not just a private vineyard, but also has a post-production studio that Lucas works at. So would Lucas be like behind a glass? wall so like we could see him you know like we because there's advertising he works there so you just be yeah. like hey there's george you and could be there back. on the day it like i said it is a private vineyard it doesn't really do tours on a normal basis so what is this deal that they're trying to get people out there in two separate ways <laughs> well i want to know they're only going to give one, but it's four mm. drinks. So does this backpack that they provide you also provide like weapons so you get the four of you can fight to see who survives and gets to go to Skywalker? Yeah. Ranch? Hope because you got your I, lightsabers on you. I can't <laughs> imagine the the group of people just being cool with it, going like, oh, that's all right. It was my treat, but you go to Skywalker Ranch because you know that five thousand. I got that in my pocket. <laughs> I hope it's good forever because I don't know what, at what point I'd be getting out there. Here I am <laughs> on the cruise. <laughs> when am I going to Cal- uh, that's in California? When am I going there? I don't know. Sometime in the future. They should make it like it. So it's the next week. So I'd be like, oh, and you only have like 72 hours to redeem it. You know, so. <laughs> okay. That's your know, problem. That's, take a <laughs> helicopter. Maybe they could just have a helicopter come to the boat. And pick you up like a James Bond thing and just take you out there. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It could be like <laughs> I don't know. But um the the whole thing is just reeks of um uh, exorbitance and uh, it's weird it's- timing. I mean, the most of us are feeling like we're in a recession, we have gasoline prices so high, all the uh, the food prices going up. It's odd timing for all of these really luxurious items to be getting so much press. Maybe it's just history repeating itself. Maybe it was always like this during the Depression. But And again, the blowback on this is people going, like, well, look, it's on the Disney Wish. It's their new boat. And you got everybody talking about it. So mm-hmm. that's that mission accomplished, right? And I'm thinking, no, not necessarily. Do you want well, people talking mission. about it if it's kind of twerking everybody off Mm. i mean the let alone the whole basis of on top of trying to get this drink would be the ticket price to get on the boat which someone did like a comparison of just like how expensive these disney cruises are comparatively so it's like a what like a three-day cruise on disney is the equivalent of like a seven-day cruise on the carnival and i know carnival is kind of like 
you know, a little bit more bargain basement in comparison. But I mean, at some point, guys, the cost is just getting ridiculous on all these things. And it's just getting to be a little absurd, isn't it? I don't know why the whole thing kind of gives me fire festival vibes. I'm not totally sure why. I think it's because it it's the Instagram aspect of it, maybe, where the point of it is more like to show other people that you're doing something while wild, rich, and exorbitant than it is for you to even really be enjoying the experience. And that's not true of like the that doesn't fit in with the lounge, but I think it does fit in with the um, the, the hundred thousand dollar trip. Because why else would you do it? There's no practical reason to do it that way, unless you're really just hoping to Instagram it up. There is no real practical reason to do any of this stuff. It is all just um, kind of like um, self-congratulatory. You know, and so people will spend $5,000 on a drink, but they're going to do that in a private, on a reserve bourbon, and some very special experience. This feels, again, like, yeah, it's just another you're Instagram... Saying like- how many George Clooney's out there going to go and go, well, I'm going to spend a $5,000 drink on a Disney lounge, you know? Because like, It doesn't seem like it. George Clooney will probably be going to a lot of Disney-themed events, you know? Yeah, I, mm-hmm. I wonder how many people will do these things in a way that they shouldn't be, like, irresponsibly. Like, there's mm-hmm. a lot of people that are just really caught up on everything Disney, and maybe they shouldn't be purchasing a five thousand dollar drink um, tray or something like that. And I, that goes right back into like to me, it's just all kind of irresponsible on Disney's part. I, I just don't like it. I don't like this stuff. I don't think this is what Disney should be about. Disney should be focused on um, it, an overall experience that everybody can be a part of. Uh, doesn't mean you can't have your resorts be kind of expensive and you can't have your expensive rooms and all that, uh, as they have had for like the last seven, several decades. But they're really ramping it up now. All right. Well, so um, so when are we going? When are we- <laughs> well, actually, we do need to get over to the Taste of Florida Festival at Disney Springs. We should do a, um, a talk about that. as a, That's not going to be going on forever. And I just saw a really good Prince Charming dev video on it with a lot of recommendations. Okay. And I don't see myself uh, spending $5,000 on anything over there. Well, at least not until it's your birthday. And I just surprise you with it. And you'll be so excited to have a $5,000 bourbon drink. Yeah, I feel like I'm not even going to be able to taste the difference. I, yeah, I really don't think you would. <laughs> All right. So I'm Scott Ball. That's Georgia Ball. Talking about how Disney is just making us all go spin our heads once again because they're just crazy over there and um until next time this is bounce off and we'll talk to you again soon bye-bye bye